of the benevolent and tyrannical king. Yeah. And you want a boss like Mufasa because he's going to explain to you what the mission is. He's going to lead you through to the goal and he's going to tell you your role in the, in the game and he's going to, if any, he wants to empower you to the point that one day you can be the leader yourself and then he can like lay his hands off it. And, mm. and uh, Scar, who's going to micromanage and be a tyrant and dominate, you know, what happened to the Pride Lands. It was all on fire and there was no food. And, uh... Motorcycle man going by. Or... That sounded no. like a jig break on a truck. Jig break. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, I, I love that movie because... And, and, and it's a great movie because... I feel like, again, today, and this could just be the result of looking on social media too much, because the actual world I experience doesn't seem to reflect these ideas at all, but the ideas of toxic masculinity and and men being... Oh, what was someone's argument? Robin uh, was showing me a meme of... Someone she knew posted a meme that was basically like a... It was a comic strip of a a man in an argument with a woman... And the man was saying something like, it's not all men that are rapists and sexual offenders and abusing, domineering pieces of shit, essentially. Mm-hmm. And then the woman in the comic strip puts the man in, the, in a chokehold and says, it doesn't matter because there is enough... She basically says, there is enough men doing it that it doesn't matter. Yeah. That essentially it's, it's on all men, you know? Yeah. And so... It's horrifying, brutal group identity gender politics that can result in a genocide because you can, when you lump everyone into a group and start saying that all men are toxic and you lump all men into that group, then next thing you know, you can have a genocide the same way in the Soviet Union. It was uh, class guilt. It was guilt by, even if your grandfather was a landowner or something, you wound up in those concentration camps too because you got lumped into that class guilt. And it's it's a dangerous ideology. It's dangerous, and uh, and for me, it seems like these people only have an awareness of every man being Scar, and they have no perspective of Mufasa. They don't, and maybe they've never actually met Mufasa in in their life. But yeah. it's just it's a it's a deadly and it's a dangerous ideology, and it's and uh, and it, it disheartens me. And it's it's brutal because. I can only imagine being a young boy raised in today's culture and being told that you're a toxic, dangerous, violent creature and, and all that within, kind of thing. But within you definitely does lay that, but accepting... There is a moment of, like, everyone wants to be viewed upon the actions of themselves, but there is within res- accepting responsibility for you and yourself as there is also another picture of your greater surroundings and saying like you know what yeah there is a disturbing amount of sexual assault that is happening and for the most part it's most certainly men upon women are you doing it yourself um uh, I certainly, I would certainly hope not, but, uh, just to acknowledge, like, just to acknowledge that fact and say, like, man, I am very sorry, but, like, to be, just, yeah, just to acknowledge and, like, it's just a moment of, like, not sloughing it off, but just understanding that, like, the plight of some of like, the young women in your life have to go through this is that's terrible and Mm. uh, to lead the way once again by being like I can be a good respectful person in my community and I'm not out there catcalling women or groping women (laughs) in the workplace or Mm. wherever have you but uh yeah, it is, like, they're just, like, literally about leading the way, man, like, we should. Yeah, well, everyone, like, the men should be embodying Mufasa, you know? Yeah. Instead of it, admitting to some sort of uh, inherent guilt by the fact that you have a penis, too, just be the good man and uh, let your example speak for itself. And, because you're right, it's not, it's not like these things aren't happening, they're obviously happening. Yeah. 
And but oh, I, I don't yeah. I don't buy what that it's know. most men. I buy I, I believe it's a incredibly perhaps even a significant minority of men. But I would even like to think well, I don't want I could be being naive too, which I don't want to be. Yeah. I want to look at the information too, and uh, I need to write down like fuck, lots of research to do. But uh, yeah. I, I think it's a, a minority of men because most men I know aren't like this. Yeah. And. Um, well, like, and for example, it's true that most people in prison are men because, you know, mm-hmm. when men are antisocial, there there are um, characteristic yeah, pathologies that yeah, get expressed between yeah. men and women, mm-hmm. and so, but you know, ninety, I believe it's ninety or perhaps ninety five percent of the crimes are done by five percent of the criminals. Mm. So it's a small amount of people we're talking about here. And I don't mean to cheapen it. We need to continue to be vigilant about these issues for sure and make sure that women are protected. And But I also think a part of this is, okay, if I go off into the forest, I'm not going to first protest the government about the fact that the grizzly bear wants to eat me. You know, I'm going to take matters, I'm going to take precautions to make sure that I can defend myself against the grizzly bear. And I'm not excusing the behavior of a rapist at all. It's mm. absolutely reprehensible and disgusting, and, and you scar people oh, for... Oh, yeah, kill your local for, rapist, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but just strictly speaking objectively about the world as it currently is, there are a small amount of psychotic, disgusting men who are going to try to rape you. Yeah. So why not arm yourself and learn how to fight you know I, I mean, think uh, the thing that I've come to understand about rape in the last while that I think really speaks to the struggle that young women face is uh, a lot of people seem to have this idea it's this random stranger you don't know and most of the time it's someone who's very close to you Mm. and it can be like even like your own brother or your boyfriend uh, someone who is a good, very good friend of yours and the ability to like stand up against someone that even you love who's close to you and like come out and testify against them is yeah that is like the amount of strength that I think in itself is the characteristics of a warrior Mm. And I think that is like the strength that that takes is unparalleled. Um, yeah, I, yeah, stand up and speak out absolutely if you can, and you've got a good support network. And I, I would certainly hope that like lots of people do. I feel like yeah, fuck yeah, girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man. And but man, you're right though, because fuck, it's such a. I mean, you could write a book that would be profound enough that perhaps even fictionally explores a really realistic case of what you described where, you know, you could really build the narrative, build up someone, a man that you trust, think is trustworthy and everything, and then turns on you and rapes you or whatever. Yeah. And then you could, fuck, like, because, yeah, then, because I feel like a lot of it, too, like a woman who doesn't want to come out, I mean, you might even... Yeah. What if people don't believe you? What if they take or the man's side and they then drop the all charities. the different? Then you're gonna go through years of lawyers and court and and yeah. legal battles and and uh, you're gonna be the center of attention from the whole public because mm-hmm. of it. And uh, well, I think a lot of the times it's it's, uh, women face like this this challenge that I've just described, and they drop the charges. And a lot of it seems that these guys go, "There, see, I knew she was a liar," and it's oh. like. Yeah, like, man, it turns out that, like, I think if you put the shoe on the other foot, I think probably a good portion of the rape that happens on men you most certainly don't hear about, because once again, they just clam up and tell nobody, and potentially suicide happens. Oh, fuck, for sure. Yeah, and I think that's a struggle in itself, but... But that's uh, real, too, because it is the case that sometimes people lie about it. Um, I, uh... I, uh, 
man, these, these conversations are so intense and complicated and, and treacherous yeah. in a sense. But uh, I don't know if we have the next six hours to really uh, digress no, well, into the rest The of whole this culture thing. is having the conversation 24-7 yeah. too, and it's just it's, it, well, because it needs to happen. But uh, it's... Uh, okay, well, I, I worked with this guy who was fresh out of prison in Alberta at a temp agency, and, uh, I to pause that. This guy's got a piss. Oh yeah? yeah. Well, how about this? Uh, I'll just fly solo for a minute when you pee. And, yeah, one and second then, here, buddy. I, I'll pee after yeah. you though. Too. <laughs> there he goes. There he goes. <laughs> yeah, well, well, ladies uh, and gentlemen, I've never uh, been alone on my own podcast before. Oh, jeez, the pressure. Uh, well, you know, if you're enjoying things so far, be sure to be sure to subscribe, <laughs> like, and share. And uh, also, if you absolutely hate it, be sure to let us know too. Um, we're we're all very open to the possibility that we're absolutely full of shit and retarded, and uh, and perhaps you know a bit of an asshole too. Um, but. Here it is so far with Peter Hansen. I can hear him. Uh, he's got a really nice steady stream just penetrating the, the surface of the water in the bowl with a, with a lot of strength and consistency. Good form. Good technique. You can tell he's been doing this all his life. He's a real master. He is a, a real prodigy. You know, he's a real, real trooper in the field. No one's pulling it off better than this guy. Man, have you ever uh, stealth peed before? So, like, they call it stealth peeing. Where you try and almost just get it on the edge There's of that the... that small section where it's a uh, still <laughs> toilet bowl, but it's not quite the water, and I just turn to pee right there, maybe. I mean, I, don't, I, I think we should all just let our freak flag fly and just you know pee however loud we want you know it's defecation and i loved it man i loved the uh it was it was a sheer work of art that the sound yeah i I gotta say like i I kind of used to do that as a kid and now i've uh i've really kind of like enjoyed the game of like oh i gotta pee right there (laughs) or something like that like yeah when i was a little kid i tried to uh fill up the whole bowl with bubbles <laughs> <laughs> and I was really proud when I got yeah. complete bubble coverage yeah or uh take a dump and try to pee the pee the turd in two but uh I don't know yeah there is quite something to be said about uh I don't know perhaps for a lack of a game like a a potty Potty game. Potty games. It's not even kind of fun to say, but Jesus Christ, listen to this fucking guy go. But uh, I'd like to take a stab in uh, a way of some of the things Taryn may have been saying while I was out here, and I can only assume it's uh, that he can do fifty push-ups per minute while doing some leg curls and uh, and drive a car real fast. While doing while doing those, doing push-ups while driving a car, that would be fucking pretty impressive. Man. And uh, holy moly, folks! Yeah, let me take a. You gotta enjoy like. You gotta enjoy when you you come to the toilet and you just like, man, oh man, do I ever have to pee? And I have to pee really quick, so you just like blast that out. Yeah. Yeah, just like I got I gotta pee and I got a limited amount of time to do so. It kinda reminds <laughs> It kinda reminds me of like kitchen work of just like you're in the middle of a meal and it's been a while since uh since you've peed and you're just like, Man, can I just like tag out for one second? They're like, Yeah, but go real quick and you just blast off and you just like gotta pee in like less than a minute and get right back there you ever pee with so much force that it uh it's like stinging the inside of your urethra as it's oh yeah because you're, you're pushing like you're using yeah. like every single muscle that you have or you feel you have control of at that moment <laughs> just like, 
Yeah, then little specks of blood start. <laughs> yeah, shooting. yeah.